All right. Now, every morning when I go to my workplace, the supervisor shows up, looks at everybody, says, okay, here's what you need to know. And then they do what they are, in your case, destined and unequivocally equipped in my strength, my grace, my faith, that this union is the perfect design, scripturally based and birthed from the love I have for you through my actions in your everyday life and what cannot be shaken has been stirring inside of your spirit for quite a long time and finally calmed, calmed, calmed to the point where you can be used to staying focused on what you're going to do next in my name, the mighty name of Jesus. And when there's silver in your hair, you won't have to ask if I still care. We'll hang some memories on the wall. Now, <clears throat> six months, about six months of honeymoon time for you two. This is a time for you to be solidifying your living situations, your finances, your first love that you returned to, both of you, will have sway in your decisions. And of course, my secret service will be around you at all times. You are, of course, the five that had oil in your lamps. You recognized your shepherd's voice. And David Wilkerson, you guys are familiar with David Wilkerson. In the 70s, for you guys that aren't, he, to put it simply, one of my top prophets slash preacher slash teacher and all of my elders, remember, the virtual church of Christ is what it may appear to be to those that do not have oil in their lamps. What it actually is, is the fruition and the fulfillment of me speaking through David Wilkerson. And he was so exalted that they made a movie about him, if you want to know his credibility called The Cross and the Switchblade. <clears throat> and he stepped up to the podium and he said, I have to give this quick word. This is the shortest word I've ever given. But the Lord really placed it in my spirit and I'm gonna be obedient. And then he yelled at his congregation. <laughs> the times when you used to be able to yell and cry and say, but you will know the heart of God. And there's a stunned silence and then thunderous applause. At that time, everyone felt 
the modern church needs to change. This was in the 70s, beloveds. He spoke about apostasy and then the spirit of the Antichrist taking over the churches. So in that sermon he delivered, he was talking about uh, some scripture that's in Joel about canker worms and how your harvest was being eaten. And in conclusion, he said, but the Lord says this, I will restore your lost years and triple your harvest. So shortly after that sermon, our generation came along and I started molding us. And then we are here. The Joshua generation, the last generation. And we have been pouring into those that have been led to us by God, who is Jesus, who is the Holy Spirit. So you are in the third heaven. Remember that because part of the conflict that came and may arise at times, people may be uh, not led by me to discourage you, but questioning and inquisitive about what you're doing because we are set apart, we are holy, we are doing things according to scripture. So I woke up to um, what happened in Acts and they're having a dispute saying, um, the followers of Jesus that spoke Greek were arguing with the followers of Jesus that spoke Aramaic. And they had uh, my apostles there deciding we need to assign people to handle this type of dispute and we need to be able to just preach and pray. So you, beloveds, are in that position where you preach and you pray for my people that are part of my elders. So during your six month honeymoon, my angels that I had a meeting with yesterday know their strategy. They're carrying out my orders as we speak. So in about six months, there will be on top of the harvest we're going to be going after that one will be waiting for us. So this is how the church of, uh, well, the church is what it should be able to be designated as, but my bride, this is how the kingdom of heaven actually works when you do have prodigal situations constantly. So spouses coming together, you're finding out why two is better than one, why that's in scripture, why it says he who finds a wife finds a good thing in God's favor, why it says it is not good for man to be alone, why it says wives obey your husbands. The proper designation of the union of two people in love with me, and I am in love with you, I am in love with you, I am in love with you. What you'll learn as you come together, like when my wife gets here, I have no doubt the Holy Spirit will be more prevalent in her visual and the things that I've been telling her in the spirit, I will know exactly what to do when she gets here. Same thing with you guys. You guys will be able to have a whole different marriage than anyone else. So that's important and we will confirm.
my brethren, have not the faith of our Lord Jesus Christ, the Lord of glory, with respect of persons. For if there come unto your assembly a man with a gold ring and goodly apparel, and there come in also a poor man in vile raiment, and ye have respect to him that weareth the gay clothing, and say unto him, Sit thou here in a good place, and say to the poor, Stand thou there, or sit here under my footstool. Are ye not then partial in yourselves, and are become judges of evil thoughts? Hearken, my beloved brethren, hath not God chosen the poor of this world, rich in faith? and heirs of the kingdom which he hath promised to them that love him. So many of you were in a despised by people that were not filled with the Holy Spirit at my coming. So if they happen to question or they want to discourage you, look at them with love. Look at them as not knowing more than you because you will already, I heard from the Lord this morning, this. Do not be offended the scripture says, be not easily offended. Rather respond in love. I will give you the words. Do not let that shake your marriage. That is your happiness, your reward. All right. When you look at my prophets who are also teachers understand that they may have an idea that sounds good to them and it sounds very biblical and then the more i bring them into me the more i bring them into me the deeper they go into me in christ they know I'm usually going to say, okay, that's good. But do this instead. And then they sit there. This is so good. So they have a lot of training in that. They know what they're doing. Your marriage will be the same thing. I'll say, that's good. Do this. So you're not going to be in that situation where many dread going. I got my hopes up, Lord, and then you're already in that state where it's going to happen. It's happening. You see that it is happening. You see that it is happening. You see that it is happening. Don't worry about getting your hopes up and then having them crash down, I promise you. The most that might happen, you might get annoyed for a split second, but that's me, you, <laughs> you know that. So all of the things that come with marrying Jesus, the Lord Jesus Christ, you are going to see now what it's like. I'm excited. So expect me to be with you in your day. It will be a normal thing for you. This is called life, beloveds. And I don't want you to feel inferior. I want you to instead look at reality and common sense. I have 700 million, a 
across the earth making YouTube videos. We had to um, recognize that YouTube videos were becoming people's uh, grasp at hope that this is really Jesus, this is from God, this is going to happen for me. So having the true light and the real thing available to you, it makes perfect sense. Whereas people come to me when they desire to come to me, we are available 24 seven. I am doing something talking to one of my prophets 24 seven. The kingdom operates 24 seven. I would caution people from um, feeling like the New Testament translated directly to Greek, directly to English, when it would be the equivalent of me speaking in this same language now and then someone translating it into Portuguese. Instead, look at the scripture. We'll confirm them. as I can speak on any situation through it. And I can maneuver you through it. The Holy Spirit just told me, Isaiah 61. The Spirit of the Lord God is upon me because the Lord hath anointed me to preach good tidings unto the meek. He hath sent me to bind up the brokenhearted, to proclaim liberty to the captives, and the opening of the prison to them that are bound. To proclaim. So, Beb, <clears throat> amen. We both did time together in what people referred to as the second heaven and many of you were in that prison now in that prison you also had if you spoke Syriac Aramaic, I would speak that all the time, but you speak English, so English will suffice. Sheol, when you are um, in Sheol, that's a state where your spirit is not really receiving the favor and the blessings in the form of pleasant displays of my love and adoration for you. You are more in a state of, if I make my bed in Sheol, you are there. If I make my bed in the heavens, you are there. You are understanding that while Sheol may seem confining at times because nothing seems to be happening because I'm not allowing anything to happen. I did not let false relationships uh, grow 
Whereas during the Age of Grace, there wouldn't have been such, okay, this judgment needs to come a lot quicker than it usually would have. Keeping it positive, <clears throat> you realize that you don't want to be away from me when you have knowledge that I exist. It just eats at you. And it's what produces that um, understanding that you don't have peace in the first place. That is a blessing. You'll keep your peace in the third heaven. You will not be easily irritable. You will have all of the fruits of the spirit because you will be in the Father, who is Jesus, who is me. Sound speech that cannot be condemned, that he that is of the contrary part may be ashamed having no evil thing to say of you. Exhort servants to be obedient unto their own masters and to please them well in all things, not answering again, not purloining, but showing all good fidelity. All good fidelity. All good fidelity that they may adorn the doctrine of God, our Savior in all things. For the grace of God that bringeth salvation hath appeared to all men, teaching us that denying ungodliness and worldly lusts, we should live soberly, righteously, and godly in this present world, looking for that blessed hope and the glorious appearing of the great God and our Savior Jesus Christ, not purloining, but showing all good fidelity. So I will remain faithful to you as I always have and always will, and you will do the same. Being led, and the scripture said, those that are led by the Spirit are the sons of God. You being led by the Spirit is going to be your answer. Your church is you and your spouse. Where two or more are gathered, I will be in your midst. Your future, your ministry, your prosperity is here. And I'm teaching you how to thrive. In Sheol, there is no love. So you are truly free. Now you receive all of the I was thinking of an English word. <laughs> oh. You have access to everything I have in the third heaven. If you seek wisdom, it will be given to you. So your prayer time together, now that both of you have your testimonies, one having the testimony, here's how I handled this separation. Here's what I learned from Jesus. Jesus, Jesus, me.
and the other, well, the father's side of him isn't as fun. <laughs> but here's what I learned. And so both of you coming together are the perfect picture of the father who is in heaven, hallowed be his name, Jesus, was with both of you. And is with both of you. The cord of three strands was not easily broken. And both of your testimonies are going to strengthen what will always be both sides when there is um, questions and all of the emotions that you had the courage to brave in order to get closer and closer and closer to me. Jesus, same face, beloveds, one true God. All right. I love you. I love you. I love you.